Hey, hey, welcome back to another episode of It's a Football Thing. As always, I'm your co-host, RJ, aka The Balanced Blue, joined by my fellow co-host and champion mates, Scott Taguna, Rob the Red Devil. Rob, I'll go to you first, Legend. How you doing? Good, mate. Good. It's, um, obviously, it's um, been a happy week for football for me after our disappointing loss to Arsenal, so it was a good comeback. And yeah, mate, always good to see you, you two on screen as well. Beautiful. Scotty, you're fired up, man. You're pumped. You're wearing half the right colours. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, doing well, man. Doing well. Look, we're talking about Graham Arnold tonight, so I thought I'd wear the green. A little bit of gold on here, not quite the Aussie gold. Uh, but looking forward to it. How are you? Not bad. Green and gold, feeling old and bold. But the big topic, Football Australia earlier announced Graham Arnold, of course, the Socceroos manager, will remain the Socceroos head coach, extending his stay with the Socceroos until the next FIFA World Cup when it finishes in 2026. First reaction, Scott, how did you feel when this announcement was dropped? I'm actually really happy, man. I'm, I'm happy with the announcement. Um, I was shocked at my happiness as well because had you asked me this pre-World Cup, I was quite vocal. I wanted him gone. I wanted him out even in the build-up to the Cup. So um, he, he's made an impression on me and he's managed to change my mind, which is not something easy to do. I uh, even asked my wife, man. My, the, my head does not change often. Uh, but Graham To be Arnold, fair, but hey, Scott, I was going to say, though, you represented, I think, without knowing the data, I think you represented uh, a large majority, not a majority, but a large portion of the fan base. They were quite disenchanted with Arnold, but I think you made a good point. That World Cup was a turning factor in the career of Graham Arnold. Yep. Robbie, what was your first reaction, legend? Um, I'm kind of sitting on the fence, if I'm going to be honest. Um, oh, I, you're I'm, doing I'm, the RJ thing. Yeah, I'm sitting on the fence. Um, I think there's positives and there's cons. So, um, like I said, as, as we as we unfolded, I'm sure I'll definitely elaborate on that. Yeah, yeah. And, Roscoe, let's see your thoughts, man. You're pretty bad. Yeah, look. Yeah, well, I try to be, and I try to not be on the fence, despite the continued fence-sitting jokes, of course. But my initial reaction, which we had in the group chat as well a bit this morning, was I was just happy Football Australia came out and made a decision nice and swiftly. They didn't let it drag on too long. I like the stability angle that they're going with. And I think part of my pleasantness of that decision was the fact that we did well in the major tournament of the World Cup, Mm -hmm. and... You can tell the passion of this guy. We heard him talk about afterwards just how much it means to him being a proud Australian himself, having represented the country for such a long time and achieving what other coaches or other managers have failed to achieve during their time with the Socceroos. I think there's more pros than cons if I'm breaking it down. It's not perfect, and we'll go into some of it. Scott, I know you've got some of the statistics lying in the background, but just at a high level, for me... What, what I like about it, apart from the stability angle, is the familiarity side as well. He knows the operation. He knows the culture. He's there for the right reasons. And I do genuinely believe that he's trying to promote the long-term growth of Australian football. And that's echoed through some of his comments that came out today when he's talking about things like proper investment into the facilities that enable the growth in football that this country has been lacking for such a long time. But... Scott, what were some of those high-level stats? Look, just before we jump into the stats, I just want to read you boys a quote because I think that patriotic side of Graham Arnold, for me, that's huge. I mean, Mm. I know we'd had a bit of a discussion in the past about would you rather a foreign manager or would you rather uh, a manager from that country? And my argument was always, well, I want the best man for the job. I don't care where they're from. But I do feel with Graham Arnold, like you said, he knows the structure. And and listen to this quote from him. He said, I approach the next four years with a clean sheet, which is underpinned by a burning ambition to provide more opportunities to our leading, emerging and established talent whilst challenging for major titles, starting with the AFC Asian Cup in Qatar. He's hungry. And I think that World Cup for him reignited some of that hunger because he looked a bit down and out. Robbie... From a kind of national point of view, in terms of his pride, you'd have to be happy with this, no? A hundred percent, I am. And look, the whole four years to me screams out long-term project. Obviously, everything he's doing with the younger ones. Obviously, we've got the the Oli Roos with the Olympics coming up, and he's already, you know, previously to this, he's already worked with a lot of them and 
yep. promoting a lot of the youth to the national team. But the thing is, for me, football is still a results-based business. So if he does go to the Asian Cup, which is in a year, and yeah, okay, he's got a year now to kind of find out some and um, promote some of these youth. But if we do, if we have a, a failure of a, of a tournament, what do you say? Okay, don't worry about this one. We'll sweep it under the carpet and we just continue. Like for me, he's got to still get, he's got to still reach Semis. a certain bar. Semis for me in Asia has to be, should be the minimum, to be honest. Like, yeah, we've just, especially when we've just come off the back of such a successful World Cup, we've moved right up the rankings. But for me, you're always going to have your Japan, your, you know, your Saudi Arabia's, but we, you know, um, Korea um, even. We should be in that mix of like those four. And anything less than that, like what happened at the last Asian Cup, I think is a failure. So for me, it, it's still, res- uh, it, it's good for the project, but it's still results based. If we're not playing good football or it doesn't look like everyone's on the same page or we just, you know, it's, we're not getting the results. Like you just said, he wants to be um, winning major tournaments or, you yep. know, in the deep end of it. Mm. For me, that's when you're going to like look at, okay, it's not just because if, if they're not trying to do something well in the next tournament, what's to say they're going to do it at the, at the Olympics at the next World Cup? Fair shout, mm-hmm. RJ. A big part of this contract, and it's come out in a lot of the articles, came out um, on the Socceroos website, is that Graham Arnold, as part of this, will work in a mentorship role with young Australian coaches as well to help bring through that next generation. How important do you think that is for the future of football in the country? Well, I think it's it's fundamental. I think Robbie's right in a sense it's a results-driven business, but there is the, the fine balancing act of the short-termism versus long-termism because what is the real value of doing well in major tournaments if you can't get that sustainable momentum for a long period of time? So I think having someone that's going to help bridge the gap and keep in and, and try to help usher Generation X or the new talent, I yeah. think it's crucial, mate, because we know as a sport, we've spoken about this many times online, offline, it, football in Australia is the has the highest participation rates, but for a myriad of reasons, it hasn't quite funneled through to the top and got the traction it deserves. Some of it's stuff within our control as a sport. Some of it is beyond and is externally driven, as we all know. So to have someone like Graham, especially riding the wave that he's currently on, to be able to usher in that new talent, man, I think it's fundamental. And just looking at the stats, because now I have some in front of me, talking about his record relative to other Socceroos managers, it's the second best. 52 games, 29 wins, 10 draws, 13 losses, ahead of Pimva Bay, Holger Rossik and Rally Rasic. Again, he's not perfect. He has plenty of flaws, which I think he's humble enough to admit that he can be doing better, and that's part of his growth as a manager. But if I'm the Socceroos, I'm factoring in not just the long-term project of trying to bring in the Gen Ys, but also the cost factor. They don't have to spend money where they don't have much of it relative to other sports. But also the fact that you've got a level of the groundwork's already been done with this group of players. He has the structures in place. The infrastructure's already there. It is taking a big risk to bring in some more heralded managers, either proven or non-proven. For example, let's throw some names out there, boys, just for the sake of it. Bielsa. Off contract, he played some very attractive football leads, but just because someone plays an attractive style of football, does that automatically worth taking the risk and bringing them into a completely new environment? I don't think so for me personally, but who are some names, boys, just for argument's sake? If it wasn't Graham Arnold, who else would be in the, in the mix, you reckon? There's, there's a long list. I think it's, money is the question, man. Like, um, for sure, there's, there's lots of people that are available, but it's, it's uh, how much they would cost is another thing. And I don't think, you know, I think um, pumping money into the grassroots and you know, a, a hub for Australian football, like I said, a training facility would be probably priority over going out and blowing it all on on a well known manager. But who is a proven well known? Like, let's just pretend for argument's sake, money is not the object here. Who comes in now, ready made? that's going to automatically improve us for the World Cup. It's hard to say, though, because, like, for example, let's look at someone like um, Pep Guardiola, right? Just mm. so I can say, very specific brand of football, a brand of football that's like, very reliant on uh, technical players, players with a lot of flair, all of that. We don't necessarily have that in our squad. 
So I don't know, for example, I mean, if you gave Pep 10 years, he'd get us, you know, doing amazing things. But international management is not as long-term as club management. I don't think we have the personnel that would help Pep to bring out the best in what we've got. What are our strengths? Our strengths are our grit. Our strengths are our physicality. I think we're a pretty fit football team too with our our climate and stuff. So a big name ne- isn't necessarily the best thing for this country. I actually think that Graham Arnold's a good choice for now. Um, I actually think the next man in line is Kevin Musket. Uh, I think he'll probably be the next guy to get the shout when Graham's done. Uh, look, the, the only name I'd probably go for is maybe the romantic homecoming of Ange Postacoglu back, back into the fold. But he's been there, done that. He's at Celtic. And he's got his own, he's got yeah. his own career yeah. endeavours, I think, But at look, the to, to yeah. give a name, someone like Ange, I think, could come in and pick it up and maybe take it further. But I, I think we just need to be happy with what we've got and we need to have faith that... The World Cup wasn't a fluke, but it was a stepping stone in the right direction. So that's where I'm at. I don't know if you have a manager in mind, RJ. Yeah, I, I do. Mine's a surprise one. Here we go, super um, frank. Mate, he's available, of course, but why would he come now? He wants to relax, chill out, reflect. You know what? I'll give you a clue who I'm thinking of. He's a big name manager. He's available. Potter and he was down here enjoying some tennis in Melbourne recently. Ah, Tommy, Tommy Churchill. <laughs> well, no, mate, we could do a lot worse, couldn't we? I no, thought look, he might be in the management ranks, but that would have been a wild card option. Yeah, I, I think he's – the certain managers, I just – I don't see them at international yet, yeah. if you know. I still think he's got a lot to offer club football mm. before he moves. It's not to say you have to be older to be um, you know, a national team coach, but I just think that – you know, I think he has unfinished business in club land before he moves into inter, um, international for me. Spot on. And I think he'll personally be aiming, even if he was going to go internationally, I think he'd be aiming yeah. a little bit higher than us. I've, like got a, I've got a question for you, lads, too. Obviously, we've extended his contract, but just some quick reflections on the duration of the contract because obviously there's we have that in our control as an administration, but... Do you reckon they could have maybe tried to hedge their bets and said, let's just hold you off to the African or the Asian Cup, sorry, and see how you go? What are your thoughts that's, about that's, the term? That's me exactly, RJ. That's exactly what I was saying um, when I was sitting on the fence. Um, I'm all for it, like, as a reward for what he's done at the World Cup. Um, you know, everyone was, like um, Borgi said before, a lot of people would have said, okay, no matter what, he's got to go. Obviously, mm. he got the best out of the team. But, and he should have been rewarded for that, which I think for me he should have got two years or definitely the next major tournament, which is the Asian Cup, and yeah. then make a decision from then to say four years, four years, like I said, on results, if they don't like where wherever we are in at, at that time, and they have to, you know, it costs money to sack a manager at the same time as well. So for me, it would have been like, okay, you do well at the Asian Cup, continue with your journey kind of thing, or you go, we're not happy where we are on both. We might have a parting of the ways we need someone mm. else to come in. So for me, he should have definitely been awarded the next um, Asian Cup. Four years for me, it's just screaming out project. That's all it's screaming out for me. And look, I think he, he des- I think he deserves the length on the contract. I mean, you give him two years, you're basically saying publicly, look, you, you did all right, but we're not sure if it was a fluke. So we're just going to give you two years. That, that's not setting him up with the right mentality, I think. And I've, I use my own club, Arsenal, as an example of this. I, I wanted Arteta out at a certain point. I was unimpressed with what I was seeing, but the club backed him. The club made him feel like they had his back. They believed in him. They believed in what he was doing. And we're reaping the benefits of that now. So I think this contract says to Graham Arnold, mate, you did a top job in the World Cup. We backed you the whole way. We know it wasn't a fluke, and we look forward to seeing what you've got in future for us. So, look, I'm cool with it. I, I think four years, fair enough. If uh, anything, all it does for me, I can, this is where I will sit in the feds because Robbie makes perfect sense where you're trying to reward it based on merit, but at the same time, having the length at what it is puts to bed all of the speculation for now. And they can just focus on the football rather than will he stay around for the long haul? Is he just here for temporary, blah, blah, blah. All of that has been quashed, at least for now. But I'm keen to see what you, the listener, have to say about this. 
Were you surprised? Was this a natural conclusion based on the overachievement, I would say, in the World Cup? Keen to hear your thoughts. Throw them in the comments and I'd love to get your perspective on it because we're just three blokes here that have an opinion on something we're very passionate about. But on that note, boys, any final reflections before we close this one out? No, mate. Graham Arnold in. That's it. Graham Arnold in for now. Up the Socceroos, lads and lasses. Take care. All the best.